Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. I'm here with my buddy Road Dog. Yo, Road Dog, how's it going over there, boss? Going just superb, sir. That's what I want to hear, man. What happened on the weekend, dude? What'd you get up to? Tell everybody what what happens in Road Dog's world over the weekend. (laughs) Uh, Not a lot, bud. Like, I'm probably... (laughs) Oh, I'm, I, I'm like the, uh, the uh, what's that, the most interesting man in the world. I am his twin brother, the uh, most <laughs> uninteresting man on the planet. <laughs> you remind me of the Captain Morgan guy. You know the Captain Morgan guy that sticks his leg out? And then yes. <laughs> you. Yeah. Captain? Yeah, that's, uh, that's it, man. It was a pretty mellow weekend. Um, our neighbor had, uh, oh, man, we could, we could share a whole bunch of news here today. Our neighbor, uh, Hockey Hair, as you call him, had his 30th birthday. Did he? Yeah. Oh, man, he's only 30. He's doing pretty yeah. well for a 30 year old, that boy. Well, it's just when you look at it, right? It's like, so now everyone thinks that I'm super young, which I do look that way. But then on the other side, um, Fist Pump, as you call him. By the way, if you're just tuning in for the first time, Carl Bryan loves giving everyone nicknames. Um, so just be aware if you meet him live, if he just starts randomly you, calling, calling you whatever, just roll with it. <laughs> But fish pump it's became. Usually, uh, your two neighbors there, isn't it? They got hockey hair on one side, road dog in the middle, and fish pump on the other side, isn't it? And fish pump became a grandpa on the weekend. Oh, did he? Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's about to become my family doctor. I don't even know if he realizes that, but there you go. I can't wait. I sort of, I sort of warned him about that, so I'm, I'm not sure if he's just screening his calls at this stage. It's possible. All right, buddy. Look, let's get into it, man. So tell me, yeah. what do we got? Uh, hit me with some questions, bud. Okay, so obviously you've been, you know, in your daily emails, everything else, somebody's just talking about um, following sort of your instructions, as they say, researching local businesses and finding ammunition. Is there anything else that that you can kind of give them tips on to help them convert them to coaching clients? Um, Okay, so hang on, I just want to make sure. So somebody is following my advice and researching local businesses and what should they be looking for? Am I reading that right? Yeah, they're, just, um, they're you know they're finding ammunition to they were looking for more ammunition to help them you know convert them into coaching clients. Okay, um, okay. First of all, obvious one: um, people who are advertising, think about what happens. Nobody buys advertising. You want to go like three levels deeper than that. What they're really doing is they're saying, "Yeah, I'm going to pay you money to help make my phone ring." Okay, that's somebody that's looking to grow their business. That's somebody that I'd be looking to. Um, there's going to be a local chamber of commerce down the road, probably depending upon the size of the city and whatnot, probably a couple, if not a number of them. Um, I'd be looking for members, but here's a little bit of a, a trick. Look for new members, okay? Because when somebody's a new member, there's a reason why they joined, okay? And often those reasons become reasons why, you know, suddenly taking on a coach and getting a little bit of direction and somebody to talk to you on a weekly basis would make sense. So, and then how do you do that? You build a relationship with the girls at the chamber, the guy at the chamber. Let me just tell you, and maybe just, so I don't want to riff too much here on this one, but the, the number one salesperson at the chamber is somebody that you want to be buddies with and a story. In fact, forget buddies. You want to build a business relationship with that person. You want them to think you are the bee's knees. In fact, I don't want you to think, I want them to know that you are the bee's knees. Again, you work with us, we can teach you how to find any business owner $100,000 in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising. That becomes your superpower. You want to sit down the number one salesperson at the chamber, walk them through the process, get them to send you a few people so you can do it pro bono for those individuals to impress the heck out of them so they think to themselves, wow, you know, you, you, as in you, the business coach, are the one to be able to provide an insane amount of direction to folks. But if they're the number one salesperson, they know who the new members are. 
those are really hot prospects for you. It would go the same with BNI. BNI's got X amount of members. Well, the guy who signed up last week and this week and yesterday is a hot prospect to buy coaching. Okay. Um, in fact, I think that needs a little bit of detail. So why is that? Uh, if you once again you break it down, if you go out like let's say you've signed up a hundred coaching clients in your career, okay? If you go to literally every single one of them, research them a little bit, and you go back ninety days between when they bought your coaching, okay, and 90 days prior to that, and in many cases a week or two, you're going to find that there was an event, okay, so I want you to capitalize and bold event, there was an event that happened in their life that led them to finally say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to get a little bit of, you know, I'm going to get a little bit of direction, I'm going to hire somebody, okay, an example of an event is a birth, a death, um, a taking on a staff member, a losing a staff member, a really, you know, your number, your manager, your top salesperson leaves, starts a business and goes into competition with you. This is somebody in an enormous amount of pain or frustration. And there's a good chance that they're all of a sudden going to start thinking, I got to change my ways. Okay. So I could go on there. I'm taking on a big client, losing a big client, taking on a new product, losing, you know, distribution of a product line. That event will lead them. Because if you jump on the phone today and you cold call, right, 100 businesses, we all know you're going to get told, you know, take a long walk up a short pier by certain individuals that they're going to say it in a way that could, you know, it's pretty mean, mean spirited, right? That exact same individual, you call them in one week, three weeks, a month, six weeks, 90 days, and they're like, all of a sudden, totally receptive to your call. How the heck does that work? And I, I'm sure you guys know that maybe even instinctively, maybe you've experienced it, but that's what will happen, right? It's often the ones that will tell you to F off that actually buy the coaching, right? Because again, they're emotional types. Um, so they're probably going through a little bit of pain and that's why they're telling you to take the long walk. But anywho, so, so that event um, is important. Well, buying the advertising in this event, okay? Signing up with the chamber is an event, and often it's a, an, another event, the birth, the death, and the ones I just went over, that led them to reach out to the chamber and say, look, I've got to join forces. I need to get to know um, some other communities, you know, businesses in the community and join forces, okay? So new businesses, period. Like Again, what I'm doing is I'm going through things that I'm looking for locally to find hot prospects to sell coaching. When somebody starts a business, what happens? Like. They look for coaching when they get in trouble. They look for direction when they get in trouble. It's too late. It's the same with borrowing money. If you go to the bank and ask for money when you're in trouble, they say no, right? You go to the bank when the, the time to go to your bank and get lines of credit is when things are going amazingly. Again, tell, like, by the way, this is good coaching. Okay. When you're working with a business owner and they're doing well, say, look, what do your lines of credit look like? What are the, um, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the limits on your credit card, that sort of stuff. Get all that stuff bumped up when times are good, not when they're bad, because when they need it, they're not going to be able to get it, and this is going to be a bad thing. Um, so new staff members, again, that would be a, another example. Um, Husband-wife team, that's a little bit outside the box, but you'll find that often a husband-wife, the ones that don't end up getting divorced and hating each other, <laughs> which does happen once in a while, but um, in fact, the movie The Founder, you guys have probably heard me talk about that at different times. I've, I've literally watched the movie, Lord knows how many times, but 50 for sure. Um, I love the movie. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to watch it. It's the story of Ray Kroc and McDonald's. Um, it's not a big part of the movie, but if you're like me and you're, you're not just watching the movie, but you're like, I, I would watch that movie and I watch The Social Network and I watch Boiler Room and I watch Wall Street and I kind of watch it with one eye to be entertained, but the other eye... What's a lesson that I can take away from it? Well, you're going to find that in the McDonald's uh, movie or the founder, there was an infliction point, okay, where he realized, and this is true, but this actually happened. It was a very small part of the movie, but it was a huge part of Ray Kroc and the success that McDonald's have. But what he found is he was going to investors and people with loads of money um, and signing up them as franchisees at McDonald's. And then they wouldn't work there. They would hire managers. And then he'd go to the store and all of a sudden they're selling tacos and they're putting lettuce on the burgers and they're basically not following the system. Well, he realized um, at one point that a husband-wife team was his best franchise, franchisee. Okay, so like the husband um, behind the, 
the um, you know the the counter or sorry behind you know cooking and whatnot, and then the wife out the front. Picture that. So husband wife team can be a real like an example of a um, a business that could go really well, and these guys could be good to um, coach. But you know, and again, you might want to go deeper, and this is not always possible. Where it is, it can be very valuable, but. Like, look through their Facebook, like, get their name. And again, this takes a little bit of effort. This is a strategic approach, not a tactical, how can I get a client in 30 minutes that a lot of folks are looking for. Highly, um, you know, don't encourage that action. You've got, like, believe me, 30 days is going to go by anyway, so you might as well create a foundation so that you're never going to have to worry about running out of coaching clients, okay? So Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, like, go look at their personal accounts and look at you know, what it is that they're doing, right? Like, do they, are they in Mexico all the time? Like, maybe they have a place in Mexico. Maybe they own an RV. Maybe they own a boat. This kind of information would be handy when it comes time to sit down with them, believe me, right? Like, this guy loves his boat, and you sit down there, and then you talk about boats. Again, if you read, I wrote an email, I mean, going back quite a while, but like, the more innocuous, like, I am a hockey player, I wear number 22, and my favorite hockey team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay, it wouldn't be that hard to work out that bit of information about me. Well, I could tell you that if you sat down with me and you're like, oh yeah, oh I'm a massive hockey guy. Tiger Williams is my favorite hockey player of all time. He wore number 22 and I remember he used to score and ride his stick. Played for the Toronto Maple Leafs, unbelievable. I can't believe they haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1967, okay? I wanna date that guy. Okay, like that's the level, like when you go that deep, right, like the more, in, like, you know what I mean? Like, so the, the crazier the bit of information, the more tight the connection when it comes when we bond on it. So people like, people like themselves. So if you love boats and I love boats, this is a good thing. And there's a good chance that that is going to work in your favor when it comes time to closing the coaching. So, but also I don't want to get unrealistic here. Is it always possible to get that a bit of information? No, but I can tell you that if you could take it from, you know, the research that we've just talked about, and then you got me on the phone or you got me face to face, when I walk in your office, okay, or again, I get you on the phone and I'm looking through your profiles or whatever it is, I'm looking for that type of information. And then when the conversation's going, I'm asking you some questions to be able to get. So tell me, so what do you like to do in your spare time? What do you like to do in your free time? What do you guys do? What do you do with your family in the summer? Well, I'm not just asking you that to build rapport. I'm asking you that because I want to get data to work out that, you know, like how I can go about connecting at a higher level with you. Because if I want to be your coach, the, the higher level of connection we have, the more I'm going to be able to motivate you, including to get you to say yes and to hand me your credit card, right? So so these are the types of things that, again, Road Dog, I think I'm going maybe a little bit deep, but I also think that this is incredibly valuable. Like another thing, though, that, again, it's important, but you want to know my wants, needs, and desires, okay? And then you also want to know you know, like, what frustrates me? What am I afraid of? And then the biggest problems I'm having. So if I sat down with you, one of the first questions that I will ask, and again, I've created a, like a sales and marketing audit is what I used to use and we provide for all of our coaches. If you go through that, basically the third question that I would ask you is if Road Dog, if I'm trying to sell you coaching, I say, what are the three biggest challenges you currently face in your business? And I think people ask that question and then the answer comes out, but I can tell you, Road Dog, at no time am I ever, I, the level of alertness when you start to answer this question would just blow your mind, right? Like there could be, like, you know, a, a hurricane could come through and take the building down, and I'm still sitting there. I wouldn't even notice because I'm so dialed into your body language and what you're saying, and literally the words that you're using to answer this question. And the reason why is that if we have a two hour meeting, at the, I sell you in the last 15 minutes of the two hours, or if it's an hour and a half, I sell you in the last 15 minutes. Well, the exact answer that you give me to the biggest challenges that you face, right, the biggest obstacles in your business, the answer to that is exactly word for word how I sell you at the, at the two hour mark. You follow me? I don't, I don't use the examples like you stay, um, you know, Susie is really frustrating me, um, in the HR department. Well, I don't say, you know, staffing to basically, I go, Susie, who's frustrating you in the HR department. Like, you know what I mean? I literally use your words back in order to close you. So, so those are things. So, and again, I think coaches, I've got a saying, if you can sell, you can't coach. And if you can coach, you can't sell. 
Once again, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, um, but not that far off. The reason why coaches can't sell, which is I think the ones that need the most help or, you know, listening here, um, in, in this dynamic where we're talking about closing a coaching client is that they're too soft. It's all hairy fairy. It's all how wonderful it's going to be. I can't wait to get started. Everybody high five. Everybody jump up and down. This is going to be so much so amazing. We're going to make so much money. You're not going to recognize this place in six months, right? Which is okay. But it's pain versus pleasure stuff. People will pay 10 times as much to avoid pain as they will to gain pleasure, right? Like they'll They'll, they'll go to the dentist immediately, but they won't immediately go buy the stereo that they want for their truck. You know what I mean? So it's pain versus pleasure. You, you want to, you know, basically scratch out some, um, scratch out some pain and, uh, and use, use that to, um, close them. You know, another thing that I would say is, Road Dog, what do you want this business to look like in the next three years? Okay. Like I think that's a pretty standard question that a coach would ask a prospect when they sit with them. And then, Road Dog, you'd give me your answer. And again, I'm listening very intently. I'm listening to your exact words, and I want to commit them to memory so that I can sell you with them, right? But the other thing that I'll say is you say what you want this place to look like in three years, and then my immediate, my next question, which, by the way, is right there in what I call the sales and marketing audit, my next question is what's going to stop that from happening? So again, I'm, I'm dusting up a little bit of pain. So... Road dog. That's so. The question was like, how am I like? So you're doing some research and looking um, for some business owners. Those. That's a little bit of the process that I would um, walk folks through. Um, and yeah, just making sure that you're finding, you know, the boats and the RVs and the vacation stuff, you know, in Mexico. That's all pleasure type stuff. You also want to have a process, and you want to, you know, be very uh, cognizant of the fact that if you want to sell them high end coaching. You also need to muster up a little bit of pain. So, so that is the answer that I would give to that. Road so, just to to follow up, I'm not sure, Carly, are you familiar with Dan Sullivan, strategic coach? Yeah, yeah, I love him. Yeah. Yeah. So that that right there with the the three year question. So Dan Sullivan has a, a book called the Dan Sullivan Question, and uh, and I I think it's genius too. And it it goes like this: If we were having this discussion three years from today and you were looking back over those three years, what has to have happened in your life, both personally and professionally, for you to feel happy with your progress? And again, that speaks, you, we talk about it all the time, right? Like progress equals happiness, right? Like I hear you say that at least five times a day, but it, it's like, this is it, right? And, and they're gonna tell you, they're gonna paint the picture of exactly what they want to happen, and you just pay attention to that. Yep, that, I, I would agree, and that's it. Again, the intensity, like that question, that's, look, that's a fantastic question and the story. And you can't answer that question and not get detailed because of the way that he's worded it. So, yeah, very cool. I like it. Well, plus then you're going to get the personal side in to get some of that personal pain. And by the way, as a full disclaimer, um, we do not encourage, as Carl said, you know, talking about the leaps he wants to date the guy. We don't recommend <laughs> actually dating the clients. Okay. Okay, to get you, folks no, in cute, but you never know. I might get a few emails. Who knows? You never know, guys. You never know. I'm happily married, but something weird <laughs> and crazy might happen one of these days. Who knows? You no, know, Tammy's not a listener of the podcast. Very good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here's a sp real specific one. Somebody says, I'm coaching a chiropractor, and he's not interested in growing. He's, as a matter of fact, more interested in golfing. Um, and uh, I feel like I will not be around long enough for to coach them. Right? Any advice on a situation where it's they basically checked out? They're far more concerned about going hitting the links than uh, than growing their business. Um, yes, um, actually, as per usual, I'm going to go in a little bit. So here's here's the trajectory of a chiropractic clinic. In fact, you could put a construction business in there. You can. A number, I'm about to describe an insane amount of what we'll call quote unquote successful businesses. The kind of, and a successful business is one that gets over that 10 year hump and is still standing. Okay. So the chiropractor is, let's say he's 35 years old, starts his own practice, right? He starts and, you know, it's probably not going as hope well as he hoped, but he stays alive. He stays in the game, works his backside off, gets there. He hits 40. It's going pretty well. He hits 45. It's going gangbusters. He hits 50. 
he's getting tired and this place is, you know, it's moving right along. He hits 55 and decides, I want to golf, right? Like, this is stupid. He hits, what, what age did I get? So he's 50, 55, he's getting tired, right? So 60, no longer does he want to be doing it. So let's, let's go back actually the age of, you know, 55. What happens is he starts scaling back his practice. And instead of, you know, instead of working five days a week, he starts working three days a week. He says, I'm going to take off Monday and Friday. Screw this. I've worked hard for a long time. I'm only working three days a week, right? And then he goes from three days. And then, of course, he loses all of those clients and they go find other chiropractors or people call up and he says, no, sorry, I'm not available. So, you know, here's a number of the guy down the street, yeti, yeti, yeti. And then he goes to sell the business at the age of 60 and he's basically selling a part-time business and he's golfing half the time because on the surface he thinks well i don't even know what he's thinking it's it's one of those like he's going to sell it but he's selling like a part-time business that isn't going to sell for very much here's the roadmap that is significant and and he would have had some massage therapists and he would have had some chiropractors throughout that little journey but at the end of the day that's he ends up going from a thriving practice to a three-day practice and then that's what he's left with either sell or he just continues and you know kind of rides off into the sunset and some stage he turns off the phone, right? Here's what he should do. He's pumping. What, what, how old was he? He was 40 when he got going, 45 at 50. He needs to find a 40-year-old version of himself, okay? Bring that guy in. Um, basically, there's different things that motivate folks, but I can tell you it's difficult to motivate somebody more than making them a business owner. So he brings the guy in. He goes, look, you're doing – because the, the concern is the guy will come and work for him, do well, and then set up shop next door and go into competition with them, right? Like, and believe me, this happens with almost predictability. I mean, this is this, this happens in the chiropractic space and so many others, the construction company and the, the home builder, and on and on it goes. So at the age of 50, bring in a guy and give him 10% of the company. When I say give it to him, you can ask him for cash, like a check, and he owns 10%. Um, you could do it, you know, where, you know, you do it at different milestones. He gets, once we do X... You own 5% of the company. Once we do Y, you got 10% of the company, and then you continue to buy it. Because whenever you sell a business, the first two people you go to are your staff and your best customers, right? That, that's You go directly to those two. In this instance, so you bring this guy in. He's firing. He's 40. He's 45. Like, he's 10 to 15 years behind you. So when you're golfing, he's on steroids, right? Like, he wants to crank this thing up. And then you eventually, you'll, again, he goes from a 10% owner to a 50% owner on different things like milestone, effort, again, writing a check. Uh, you can garner his wages and basically take a percentage and just put it towards, you know, purchasing the company. And then he just gets more and more. But that's the business that you, you want. You see the difference there, right? Well, the guy that you're coaching, you're exactly right. He probably, you know, he's sitting there going, I've worked really hard. He's got a few bucks. He does. He's not like a zillionaire that never has to think about money again, but he's been intelligent with it from the sounds of um, the question that you're asking, right? That he's kind of scaling back. And he's going to end up with a practice that is unsalable, or if it is, it's basically a part-time business and it doesn't need to be that way. So what he should do is think about bringing in a chiropractor, young, fired up. Like it comes back to how we answered earlier, Road Dog, right? Where like attracts like, right? Well, what, what a mistake so often, right? It's the, the 60 year old chiropractor brings in another 60 year old chiropractor and the 40 year old chiropractor brings in the 40 year old chiropractor, right? A good business partnership is where you have complementary um, skill set. So if you're a good salesperson, bring in somebody super organized or analytical. And if you're super organized and analytical, bring in a young salesperson that's willing to knock on doors and make phone calls and actually likes it. And some of you listening are going, what the hell? Who would ever like picking up the phone? Well, I can tell you that you're talking, you're listening to a guy who loved back in the day picking up the phone. I could tell you stories, but, and when I say loved it, this, let's go easy here a little bit. It's not like I want to, oh my gosh, can I cold call again today? But I loved what I loved is the close, the kill. When I got a deal done, like just the level you talk about progress equals happiness. I mean, it juiced me on a level that made all of those cold calls so easy to do and well worth it because I just love the kill. I love people. What they were saying is they were making me feel worthy, right? They were saying, I believe in you. I believe in what you put in front of me. I believe in the process that you just followed. I believe in, you know, the ejections that you just handled or the way that you handled them. 
here's my credit card, here's my check, here's the signed paperwork, let's go. I just loved it. So believe me, those really good coaches listening who hate sales, believe me, there's coaches out there who love the sale, and then the call on every Tuesday makes them cringe after about three months, right? So anyway, so complementary skill sets. So the chiropractic business, you, if I'm sitting, and again, you want to drum up pain, it's like, well, you're going to work for 30 years building this chiropractic business, and you're going to build it so well that you're not going to be able to sell it for anything. You know what I mean? Because you did well, you scaled back because you were able to, and then you're not going to have anything we're, sell, we're selling. And that's what you want to do. You, you want to bring in somebody. Then, by the way, so he turned 60, and then the other guy was, say, 40. But when the 40-year-old becomes 60, he brings in, he's got the young guy in there as well. And it just continues, um, you know, continues along. And the one guy can still own 10% of the practice, or he can sell out entirely. I mean, he's still, most folks, again, the, the chiropractor, he really loves chiropractic. And that's the guy that's going to be successful. I mean, if he doesn't really, really love chiropractic in the process and whatnot, He's probably not going to be overly, you know, he's not going to be successful over like periods of decades. So the guy that really, really loves it's probably still going to want to work three half days a, a week, right? Like that, that's something they want to do. So he can continue to own X amount of the practice, but the other guys come in and take the majority over time. So that's one of the things that I would be encouraging. And that is something that I, I almost can guarantee that if you, you call a chiropractor, this is the process that they're you know, right in the middle of, and that can sell them on coaching um, big time. But but the bottom line is you, you got to muster up some pain, you know. So again, this is a guy who's doing well and somewhat complacent, so you're right. He's probably going to, you know, let you go unless you can come up with a, like, okay, if I want to sell you something, I've got to create an immediate problem and then fix it, right? Like, that's it. Like, you know, I'll meet a business coach, and it's like, do you have enough clients and they say no. And I say, okay, well, I can help you get them. And then, by the way, I'm going to train you. And not only am I going to help you get them, but I'm going to help you keep them for not months, but like years, because we've got these unbelievable tools in the unbelievable process and, you know, like a roadmap of different ways that you can help them that it would blow your mind, including sitting down and finding them $100,000 in 45 minutes without spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. Like, that's a powerful process. And it's not some fictitious fresh air smoke screen. I mean, like you sit down with somebody and believe me, they don't have an upsell. They don't have a downsell. They don't have a cross sell. They don't have an upfront offer. If you put these things in place, it makes an immediate and dramatic impact, right? End of story. So, so anywho, Road Dog, that's what I'd, um, yeah, the chiropractic client, you, you've got to muster up a little bit of pain. If you want to sell somebody something, you've got to create, in a perfect world, you create an urgent problem and then you solve it and you present so it. Sure. What, what about what about on the other side? Like, what about the guy that's like swamped? You know what I mean? Like, he's he's got all the clients that he can handle. You know that you can still have an impact on his business, but you know he's busier than than all heck, right? But yep. odds are good he's probably got some staffing issues, right? I, I would yep. imagine that typically be a key issue. But like, yep. what about you know guys on the other end of that spectrum? Do you have any secrets there to close yeah, a guy the like client that? Is swamped? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because he can't grow. The, the chokehold on every business, including yours, mine, everybody listening, Ford, Pepsi, Coke, McDonald's, you name it, this, the, you know, Facebook with Zuckerberg, the chokehold on any business is the psychology of the owner, of the leader, right? So the guy who is swamped, the reason he's swamped is that he hasn't done what we just described. You know what I mean? Like he hasn't brought in, he's the, he's the 55 year old that hasn't brought in the 40 year old. And the reason he doesn't is because again, he's a chiropractor, he's not a business owner. And your job as a coach is to help them become business owners. Do you understand, it's so important guys, like this guy's a chiropractor, just because he owns a business and he's done well for X amount of time does not mean that he's a business owner um, at his core, do you know what I mean? Like he doesn't get it. And once again, an example of that is that a chiropractor will see a massage therapist as a pain in the butt. Well, if you know anything about, if you advertise chiropractic, unless you've been in a car accident recently, no, nobody's coming, right? You advertise free massage, and then they're coming in, right? Like so, and then by the way, the job, I think we actually talked about this on a recent podcast, but it doesn't, you bring them into the massage therapy, and then you bring them, you know what I mean? Like you bring them in for massage, and then you get them up to chiropractic, which it won't work 100% of the time. And it's not, it doesn't have to work 100% of the time to be excellent, okay? But 
One, so the guy who swamped, he, he doesn't have the staff. He doesn't have the structure. He's not operating like a business owner. Otherwise, he wouldn't be swamped, quite frankly. So, so yeah, that, that guy and, and psychology is a place that you normally have to go um, with that individual before you go to him and say, oh, well, let's just hire a bunch of people. Because that sounds good, and he might tell you what you want to hear, but in actuality, once you leave his office, he's shaking his head going, no, nah, not doing that again. That was a pain. I've done that before, and that was a pain. But again, he brought in staff. He didn't have one eye on who is the golden child, and then sitting that person down and saying, I want you to take over this thriving practice, and in 10 years, you're going to, you know, there's a good chance. There's no guarantees here, because a guy could go from, on steroids to all of a sudden letting you down, right? Well, okay, unfortunately, um, that's not going to be your right guy. So you don't give up. You just try it again. Welcome to the world of business. Okay. I got a great one for you here, bud. This one I, I absolutely love because again, what we're doing, it's not rocket surgery, right? Like we're not, we're not uh, solving world hunger or anything here. Like a lot of the concepts, the things that we introduce are fundamentals which I think is just a really nicer way of saying basic. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how you feel about that. But we had a question come up, and this was actually in, in, in our group. And the question was, somebody looked at you know, some of the strategies that we have and said, well, these are all basic. I already know all of these. What do you, what do, you do in that scenario? Because I know I've got my feelings about that in terms of knowing and doing. But like, how, how do you handle that when somebody's like, well, these are I know all this stuff. This is basic stuff. No, I... Great question. Agreed. And here it is. I want you to, uh, everybody listening, I want you to go and watch baseball spring training. These guys make 10, $20 million a year. And what do they practice? Okay. And then go to hockey training, you know, spring, you know, the equivalent of spring training for hockey. And what do you think they're practicing? And then football and the baseball players are literally taking ground balls and the fielders are taking pop flies, right? It's when a batter, when, when a, a bat, you know, like, you know, the best hitter in the league is up the bat and he falls into a slump. What does his batting coach do? He grabs him. He says stuff like, keep your eye on the ball, get your elbow up, lower your, you know, your, your, all of a sudden your, your, um, center of gravity is coming up ever so slightly. He always goes to the basics, right? What are they? Karate. There are 12 moves in karate. The world champion has 12 moves and you and if I, we take it up tomorrow. We have 12 moves. It, it's always the fundamentals. Like, again, Ford, Pepsi, Coke, us, the business coach down the road. It's always the fundamentals. So, but at the same time, so if, if, okay, I'm doing a live event, okay, and I've got 25 business owners in the room. I, if I get there and we talk, we're going to talk advanced techniques for growing a business, I will go over the head of most of the people in the room and therefore I will not like my conversions will be horrific. Believe me, you give me a room of 25 business owners and I don't care how good they are. I will go through goal setting and do it in a passionate way. And almost every single one of them will be there going, I can't, I know this stuff. I can't believe I'm not doing it. Okay. And then I'll go 80, 20 time management. I'll go, yeah, but you know, time management but I guarantee you are not taking like 20% of your activity derives 80% of your efficiency or productivity, and you're not concentrating on the 20%. I'll give you a hundred things to do, and you're spending, you know, an equal amount of time on each of the hundred, which is crazy because you should be spending 80% of your time on the 20% that matter. And in actual fact, you should be taking three of the 20 and really nailing down because actually it a little bit of a riff here, but I'll tell you, so if you know, everybody knows 80, 20, this is not rocket science. Here's what nobody talks about. If you show me the 20, said so 20% of your activity derives 80% of your productivity. But if I take, I want you to metaphorically picture a magnifying glass over the 20 that derives the 80. What you're going to find is that one to 2% of the 20 will bring in about, again, I'm going to call it 80%. Okay. Of the you know, of the 80, I'm kind of, you sort of get it. Like take a magnifying glass. One, in other words, one to 2% of their activities are bringing in very close. Let's call it 75% of their productivity. So that sounds good. But one of the challenges is finding what that one to two is. And that is art, not science. And frankly, it takes a little bit of work 
and it takes a coach and a passionate consultant to show up and be insanely alert and understand how to not, when, when I ask you a question, Road Dog, and you give me the answer, I guarantee the answer is just never the answer, right? Like I got to go three levels deeper in order to get to the real answer. And that's an example of what needs to happen there. So, so yeah, so that's, so that, that 80, 20, so no advanced techniques are just like that. That is just not the way to do it. And again, I'm talking about the absolute, you know, the, you know, the big, the company you sit with that's doing 20 million, 10 million, the guy who's starting, you know, tomorrow to get, you know, to get rocking every single one of them. Yeah. The fundamentals are the fundamentals and it's the same in pro sports and it will be the same with your business coach. It would be the same with our business coaches. Again, it's not introducing rocket science, right? Like when you're finding somebody a hundred thousand dollars in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar in marketing or advertising to sit down and go through rocket science and having, you know, that, that just would not make any sense. And frankly, it wouldn't, you know, cause obviously the process is bulletproof and works so well, it wouldn't work nearly as well. Um, if it was, you know, insanely advanced concept. So, yeah, that's an easy one. And and um, frankly, that is a mistake that I think a lot of business owners and a lot of business coaches make is falling into the trap, feeling like they need to be, you know, smarter than they are. Because, again, a business coach will get started and get insanely nervous. What am I going to do after 90 days? I don't know what I'm going to coach these guys on. It's really just it, it's just not that complicated at all. It's just, yeah, without riffing here, just. There's ways, believe me, it's going to be self-explanatory, provided you're showing up. If you're not doing your homework and you're not training yourself behind the scenes, it's the same with an actor who gets locked into the role of, you know, the teeny bopper and then can never get taken seriously by an audience um, of anything above a teeny bopper. Well, what happened, I don't need to meet her or him. They didn't do the training as an actor, right? They didn't. That's How can Jim Carrey be do the mask and dumb and dumber? And then go do the um, the Man on the Moon, where he was Andy Kaufman, you know, which is a super dramatic, difficult role. And if you know the story of the role, he literally got into character and stayed in character for three months. Right? That's the guy from Taxi. Anybody listening? So you, you've got to do the training, right? So presuming you've done the training and you've trained yourself, it's the fundamentals. When I say the fundamentals, that doesn't mean that everything's always basic. Obviously, you need to you know go up a few levels, but it's always the same way karate is 12 moves. Business is not that complicated either. So. It's, you're, you're talking typecast, right? It's the same reason that whenever you audition, it's like you're always competing against Brad Pitt. It's just, it's a never ending cycle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Handsome man, that boy. But anyway, so um, last one, because we are, we are ripping through these today. I don't know what is, oh. uh, I don't know what is in your coffee this morning, but I like it. Okay. <laughs> So this is a good one, and this this is again like we're not just going to talk about all the fluffy stuff here, right? We're going to talk about challenges, and um, you know, a guy had posted a while back a question in regards to he got a text, of course, on the day that his client is expected to pay, got a note saying, "I think I need to put your service on hold for the month so I can get caught up on some other things. I'd like to revisit in the mid of next month." Like I'm sure that's never ever happened to you, Carl, but you know, for the <laughs> For people that aren't the king, like, what do you, how do you handle something like that? Because you know what happens all the time, right? People are panicked, whatever. Like, how do you handle that situation? Okay. First of all, it would uh, almost inevitably, it comes through as an email or text. Okay. Your job is to take it from email to text to phone or face to face. Okay. Because make no mistake about it. Your job is to sell this client again. Okay. And it's a bit like we talked a minute ago, the answer that they're giving, you know, like the reasons that they're giving are very seldom going to be the answers, um, you know, that I can guarantee you. So you, you've got to get to the root of the problem. But the bottom line is that you got to accept that that is a sale. You send them a message to say, hey, uh, you guys, again, if you followed my stuff, you know that I'll use like idea. I have an idea for you and that will get people on the phone. So I would send them a message and say, First of all, you got to get their guard down. So something to the effect of, no worries, I was thinking that was going to happen this month. That's not quite the wording that I would use, but something along those lines to let his guard down because now it's, oh, he's going to let me off the hook. Cool. I'm going to be able to pause this. And normally I would say, you say next month. I think it's normally like I'm going to pause this for three months and then I'll come back or I'm going to pause it 
um, over Christmas and then we'll get it started in the new year, right? Well, it doesn't end up getting started again. I can almost guarantee you that. So make no mistake about it. You, you've got to dig in. One of the things that I would encourage you, let's say that you're a $2,000 a month coach. I would encourage you to discount and say, here's what we'll do. Like the fact that if you are overwhelmed, this is why you hired me, right? Like I'm not doing my job or we're not doing our job as a team together if you've gotten this overwhelmed. So I feel like what we need to do is double down. But let me do this. I also don't want you spending two grand a month um, when you're uncomfortable with your level, you know, your workload and the overwhelm. So let's do this. So by the way, but again, I got to get you on the phone to get here. And I've got a couple of ideas. So I send you a text. I send you an email um, to say, look, I thought that might have happened. It's all good. By the way, though, when we were chatting last week, there were a couple things like what did you hopefully you're taking? You should take insanely good notes as a coach. That's your job. There's a couple of things that we talked about. I had a couple of ideas for you. You don't tell him. Remember, your job is to take it from the text, from the email to the phone. I wanted to um, let's quickly go over those. Um, yeah, let's let's quickly go over those. Let me know when you have 15 minutes to chat. Right? Boom. Get them on the phone, and straight away again, you are on the phone and you are there to make a sale. So it's like, so tell me what's really happening. What? What's the situation around there? They're going to go through. They explain. Again, I am on ultra alert. My spidey senses are out like nothing else. I'm listening to what you're saying. I got to sell you again. Use those words and the situation, um, you know, that he's giving you as the reason why you guys should keep going. But I would just say, look, let's do this. Let's lower this thing to 497 for the next three months. If he's asking for two months off, I'll give him three. If he asks for one, I'll give him two. If he asks for six, have a little bit of a problem. I try to scale him back to three total uh, transparency because you don't want to give him too long off, right? Because that's six months. He's, he's basically canceling. But bottom line is that, look, let me lower you for three months and then we'll get back at it. But again, the fact that you're, you know, a sense of overwhelm and not to mention it's Christmas time or it's, the, you know, it's the, the, um, the holiday break. This is where we we find that a lot of our breakthroughs have happened. Like, remember last Thanksgiving? Remember last year? Remember last Christmas? Remember last XYZ or another client that I worked with? Similar situation. This is when we had our real breakthrough. So you sell them and then you say, look, let me discount this thing to 497 for the next three months. Then we'll pick it up and then we'll keep cranking. But I'm going to continue. Um, if anything, I'm going to step it up a year. Um, and we are going to continue along. So, so that's basically the roadmap that I would follow. Again, unfortunately, in that situation, and that is not uncommon. I find that a lot of coaches they they let their guard down, or this is when they get their feelings hurt. And that I knew I wasn't that good of a coach. Remember, our ultimate fear is that we're not enough, and that somebody's going to take love away from us. We hear this, and it's like they're taking love away from us, right? Like we're not enough, and this can really, you know, dig deep and be frustrating and difficult for the coach. You got look. This is just another objection. It's it's no big deal, right? And believe me, it can be overcome. And often I have found, in fact, so similarly, not not like directly related to this question, but I have found that when I had high end coaching clients and we really knocked it out of the park, I often found that we had what I'll call an uncomfortable conversation before we really knocked it out of the park, right? Like. Um, you know, like, and even they're wanting to cancel. And then again, I get them on the phone. Like, why do you want to cancel? Like, what is the situation here? What are we not uncovering? And then what happens is you're able to just go a little bit deeper with them. So you have that quote unquote uncomfortable conversation. This is often when things um, can take flight because this is where you can really start getting, you know, honest with one, one another. And then those real problems tend to come to the surface. Like I'm having problems at home. I'm having problems with my wife. My kids are acting up and disrespecting me like crazy, and it's really making it difficult um, for me to really show up at work and whatnot, and that's you know a reason for the overwhelm. So now you know the real problem, and you can really start coaching them on where you need to really start coaching them. So, so that's what I would do, but the mistake that I see is that they send an email, and then a coach will try to do some selling over the email. Like Selling is done person to person, end of story, right? Either over the phone, or face to face. Do not kid your, or most definitely not on social media and private message, right? Or text. Like, this is just not the place to sell in any way, shape, or form. Your job is to get the text or the email to the phone.
end of story. So, and, I, and I'll so, add this, Carl. If, if yeah. you know, I remember specifically you and I having a conversation. We're sitting on the patio at the El Dorado. Um, I was, I had just lost a client, right? Someone just stopped working with me, and I was like, I was like, beat up. I was just, I, I couldn't believe it. And you're yeah. like, look, it's part of the game. It just, it is what it is. But you'd said to me, the fact that you are this sort of torn up about it, like it's that should be your fire that should be your fuel yeah. and it just if of course it sucks and it hurts but it's it goes to show your true character right in terms of that you actually care and and not just about the money but you care about helping them and i think sometimes that can be amazing fuel that is going to now all of your other clients are going to benefit from that in such a huge way it's it's like they've almost done you a favor I would agree. Good. But you, or it can go the other way where somebody you're crying in your Cheerios, it's the end of the world. And then you think to yourself, like when you go to close, actually here's a, so agreed with that one, man, it was fuel for you and it should be fuel for everybody listening like that. Believe me, you know what I mean? Like you were going to take on coaching clients, do an amazing job and then lose them and feel like it was a little bit unjust, a little bit taken advantage of. It's just the way it goes. But again, use it as fuel to either get in and help that individual and take it up a notch or to make sure with the next client, you just bring it at a significantly higher level, right? But here's a, a dynamic that was always interesting. So back in the day, um, again, so my, my lowest fees, if you wanted me to train you on how to become a business coach, it'd be 45 grand and then I'd provide you five coaching clients, right? So you'd go and then as part of the training, you'd sit with us. I mean, we literally signed up clients that easily. Like we just, okay, you want to be a coach with us? Boom, 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 boom. We'd fill up a room, had a bunch of different ways to do it, but we'd sit down and then your training was you'd sit beside the business development manager or me for that matter, whoever it was um, who would be running the presentation would then be sitting with the coaching client and closing them. And then that would act as your training so you could see it done, right? And then often we'd get you to do two and we'd sit beside you, you do it. And then you're, um, you know, out of your diapers and boom, you're, you're off to the races, right? Well, what we would find is that they would get the five, Boom, killing it. The next three, boom, boom, boom. They got them. Now they think about the dynamic. They've got eight coaching clients. What do you think's happening, right? These are humans coaching humans. What do you think's happening? They're losing some. They're not doing as good a job as they thought. These are their first eight coaching clients in a lot of cases, right? Like who would, you know, the first, you know, the chiropractor, the dentist that looks after his first eight patients, do you think it goes 100% smoothly? Like I highly, highly doubt it. Right. So <clears throat> what would happen is they would close, say, the next three. So they get to eight clients and then nine, 10 and 11, they would fall into a slump like you've never seen anything like they couldn't close anybody for a month. So what do you think really happened? It's all of a sudden because their coach, they doubt came through them and they were like, can I really help these people? You know what I mean? And they lost their confidence, so therefore they wouldn't weren't able to close. So I bring it back to you, Road Dog, and just understand what I said earlier. Like, you know, the the, the actor that gets stuck in the teeny proper role and then never goes, lets his training down or her training down. As a business coach, it's something you have to accept. You are not there yet. Like, part of coaching these people is that you're learning. And then away from, you know, and again, I like Tom Brady, we kind of talked about this on different podcasts. Like when he trains, I mean, the level, like the sweat pouring off of his body and the hours that he spends in the gym would literally blow the mind of the average person listening here. And my question is, and he's Tom Brady, best in the world, the level of training that you're putting in away from, you know, the nine to five, try get clients in a system, how much extra training are you putting in? How many audios a day? How many videos a day? How many emails are you reading? How many emails are you writing? And how many talks are you doing? Again, I, again, when I do a talk, like we're going to um, Cancun soon, right? So we're doing business coaching mastery. I've got a presentation that I'm doing. It's three hours. Believe me, I am going to learn as much and in many cases more than the folks listening by being the guy who's presenting. And again, I've been doing this stuff for almost a couple of decades. Like I'm not exactly new to it, but I guarantee that there's things that I am going to learn, right? Since I started doing, sending out a daily email, what I have learned over the last period of time while doing that, again, it would just blow your mind. So 
forget me. That's not what it's about, but what about you, right? How many emails are you writing, right? And you're getting better. I've noticed you, Road Dog. You've started writing some emails and started writing some social media posts. You're getting better at it, right? You probably admit your first few were, you know what I mean? It's not that they were bad, but in comparison to what they are now, they were lame, right? And now that they're, and in 12 months' time, they're going to be that much better because I know you. You're not, it's not like you're going to stop, right? Well, forget us. What about them? Like, how much training are you guys doing? It's so important. So anyway, so when you're losing those clients, guys, this is how we got off on that. Just it needs to fuel your hunger. You know what I mean? Like when I'm playing hockey and I go in the corner and some big meat axe comes in and takes the puck away from me, I don't go, oh, well, he's a foot taller than me. Well, back in the, and by the way, I'm talking back in the day. Nowadays, I kind of just shy away. <laughs> I just let the big guy go take the puck and go change and us uh, for a beer. Um, but anyway, but you like, you know what I mean? Back in the day, it's not like, oh, well, he is a foot taller than me. Like, how was I ever going to get the puck off of him? Right? Like, how good of a hockey player would you be if you did that? Or the receiver, Tom Brady throws you the ball and, you know, the cornerback's a foot taller. What? So you're going to let him have the ball instead of you catching it? Well, the next week you'd find yourself on the pine, not playing. Right? So, so it's the same. It's, you got to make that fuel you. And the guy and the short ass receiver who gets, you know, the, you know, the, the cornerback who's a foot taller intercepts the ball. He goes to training that makes him hungrier. It makes him mad. He watches that film 25 times to work out what went wrong and what he could do differently. And he makes sure that he does it differently next time. So he doesn't get the interception against him or he gets cut. That's his other option. You know what I mean? So you guys as business coaches and road dog our conversation, because I remember that, right? I was a mortgage broker. It's exactly, you know, you've got to let that fuel you, not hurt you, right? You got to, you got to stick your nose in the book as the solution, not, you know, all of a sudden, you know, cry in the Cheerios. So, so that's what I'd say to that, man. All right, bud. I think, uh, here we are. Close to an hour again. Um, one of these times, like we'll have to have like the balloons come down and everything if we get it to about 45 minutes. Any, I know it's uh, going to happen, man. All right, yeah. buddy. Well, look, Road Dog, appreciate you, bud. Everybody listening, of course, appreciate you. And again, if we've done a good job and you like what you hear, if you know of somebody who should become a business coach, please do me a favor and send this to them. If you know an existing business coach that needs to take it to another level, uh, get this podcast in front of them, please. We'd much appreciate it. Or our One Thing series and our um, series of emails through the magazine, The Six Figure Coach. Much, much appreciated. But anywho, if you want more information, go to focus.com. Oh, and by the way, if you could hit a review or give us a, uh, a rating on this podcast, of course, we would appreciate that. Um, so please do it. But um, for those of you listening, we appreciate you. If you want more information, go to focus.com. And um, yeah, if you could, you could share this bad boy, that would be much appreciated. So for everybody listening, we appreciate you. And we will see you on the next podcast. See you, Road Dog. Make it a great week, everybody. Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.